which is in his apartment. <laughs> and uh, we go in there and he shows us the, the dashboard. And this is, bef- we aren't on Shopify, but this is a custom dashboard that we had built. And we're looking at the dashboard and we had never seen the numbers in our life before that. And he said, watch this. <laughs> and he sends a campaign. And when I saw this thing, make thousands of dollars. The one email. The one email in like 30 seconds. <laughs> I looked at Ron and we I knew at that point, I'm addicted to this. Welcome to episode 29 of New Money Talks. There we go. Sure. So today we got uh, Ankit Patel, who is the chief brand officer of Obvi. So we recently had uh, we recently had Ron on, shout out Ron, and uh, had a great conversation about the company. We didn't get too much into the tacticalness of what goes on behind the scenes at Obvi though, which I think we want to dive into a little and bit a deeper. And a lot goes behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. so, so <laughs> I definitely definitely want to have a, a you know conversation about what goes on behind the scenes that a lot of people fail to understand because they just kind of look at things and they're like, oh, that logo, like, looks pretty simple. And then like, you look at a Nike, you look at all these logos and you're like, or you look at some creatives. It's like, oh, it's just a girl filming a 30 second TikTok. Like it's not that big of a deal, but there's a lot of systems and processes and design and time that goes into it. And seven, eight years in the making in order to get to where you're at now. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, someone comes up to you at a bar and says, who the heck are you? Who the heck is on? What is, what's your kind of self sales pitch and and share yeah, a little before bit Before you had your yourself. girlfriend, what were you telling the girls? <laughs> Who the hell am I? Yeah. <laughs> so this is always the toughest question to answer because it, it is, I could just say, hey, I'm on kid. I, I'm a graphic designer. Yep. Um, but, I'm fiber. Yeah, <laughs> I'm fiber. That's not what I tell the girls though. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm on Upwork. <laughs> it's a little bit more premium. Yeah. No, I uh, I usually tell people, hey, I'm on kid. I'm uh, the head of brand at a new startup. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Or I founded a startup. It really depends on who I'm talking to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll put the founder stuff in if you know. Yeah, you know each other. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, but yeah, um, that's usually how I started. Because um, there's a lot that goes into branding. It's, yep. You can't just say, "Hey, I'm a graphic designer," because a graphic designer is different than a brand designer, and people don't know the difference yet. Um, I think that's something that's coming up where uh, people will hire a graphic designer and. And you'll expect them to create your whole brand. And that's just not going to happen. Yeah. Um, oh, we're going to learn a lot. I don't even know <laughs> the difference between this right well, now. Would you, would you say that you're in a little bit more of a managerial role where you're helping pull the strings to piece everything together? Whereas graph designers maybe a little bit more in the trenches or are you responsible for both? It's funny because I would... Me as a person, I hate being in that managerial role. I actually, I don't think I'm very good at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I would definitely consider myself way more in the trenches because I'm still getting on that keyboard and pounding away all day. Um, so it's one of those things where like, I don't know if that separates a brand designer from a graphic designer, but a brand designer I would say is in charge of the cohesiveness of the entire brand. As in, do the colors make sense with the logo? Does this imagery make sense with this? Like, how is the messaging? Does it all kind of uh, go together? Like, does does this taste good? Does whatever you're making taste good? Yeah. Um, Whereas the graphic designer is like, okay, you want a logo? They'll make you a logo. You want a flyer? They'll make you a flyer. And not necessarily care about the branding aspect of it and how it's going to affect yeah. your company in the future. More I'm like, gonna, more like one time projects and stuff. Exactly. Of, yeah. I'm going to push on this one. Cause like a lot of people who are listening, it's all just like media buyers, growth people, this, that, when they oh, hear that, man. they're like, they're probably like, that's a whole bunch of bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. They're like the flavors of the colors. Like <laughs> it's on a screen. I can't Dude, eat it. I, I, mean? <laughs> I fucking hate media. <laughs> they just push some buttons and look at numbers. Shout all out, way. Ash. <laughs> now, um, hey. The three of them got a funny dynamic, by the way. <laughs> Me and Ash definitely get at it, though. Like, um, we're the best of friends. We're co-founders. You know, I have uh, all, utmost respect for him. Um, but we definitely get at it about our different philosophies on marketing as a whole, brand marketing versus performance marketing. Performance marketers, I think, um, at this point in time, think that they are uh, better or more responsible, <laughs> responsible for a brand success. Um, yeah. When in reality, you need a bit of both. And um, it took me a lot of time to 
realize that performance marketing and brand marketing don't have to be two separate things. Mm. It can be one thing. And it's really about how your relationship is with whoever your ad buyer is. And it's about how you're going to manage that relationships. Where are the lines that, you know, you you set there so you don't cross? Um, you know, I'll give Ash a brand style guide or something and say, hey, you got to stick within this guide. He's not going to stick within that guide. And really? I really no, he's not. Because Whatever gets the highest row ash. He's- <laughs> exactly. And it's typically the ugliest thing. It <laughs> like, is the ugliest thing. And yeah. it's it's just something that you don't even know why that's selling. Um, but it's one of, yeah, it's one of those things you gotta manage. And it can't be one of those things where performance marketing gets so outside the box where now you don't have a brand and you're just pushing product all day. Yeah. And at that at a certain point, that catches up to you real quick. You can get quick cash. But that's not sustainable cash because people want to be part of a lifestyle. People want to yeah. be part of something, um, not just a product. My question is now, how'd you learn all this stuff? So like, you've been doing this for a while. Yeah. I know we spoke about, you have a similar story as Ron did, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, you guys have been friends for a while. Yeah. Kind of went through agencies together, companies together and stuff like that. Let's spend like five, 10 minutes on that. I want to hear that whole story in a sense. Like, sure. how'd you fall into this whole branding world and like building... First of all, the logo, Avi. We spoke yeah, about that before. It's kind of sick. You're the man behind <laughs> it. Um, like, give us that whole story. Yeah. Today. I want to, we'll go back into the tactical stuff because that's yeah, yeah. where we're spending time here today. 100%. Um, so I met, I met Ron in college. Um, he rushed for my fraternity. You know, I just dweeby kid coming up to me at the rush rush booth. <laughs> <laughs> I did not think we were going to be friends. Are you older? Uh, no, I'm actually two months younger. Oh, gosh. So okay. that makes a difference. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, eventually we ke- became friends, whatever, whatever. He did accounting and I was in the art school. And we never thought we'd ever work together. Like that just, yeah. and th- back then in 20, you know, 2013, 2012, like that wasn't a thing. Um, anyways, we moved to Jersey and we got to our first apartment. And um, we were living together and he was working at Deloitte in the city and I was working at a startup actually in the building, Uh, it was called Shreds. And I'm sure he told you, uh, we were there for about three years, but anyways, Ron ended up joining the team at a certain point. Um, We lived in the same building that we worked in. (laughs) (laughs) Um, It pretty much worked all day, every day. If you didn't have your phone on you, you were fucked. But there was a point, there was this one point where me, the CEO, he calls us, me and Ron, this is about 11 o'clock at night, calls us to come over to my place. So we're thinking a strategy session, or we're working all night. Grab our laptops, we go over there. He said, hey, I want to send out a campaign. And I'm like, all right, it's an email campaign or something like that. So at 11 o'clock at night, just 11 randomly. 11 o'clock at night. And <laughs> the thing is, back then, there well, was... How big was the company too, also? So at, at that point, the company was growing. Uh, that was, I think, our one of our biggest growth years. So we were probably... They were probably at 30 million at that point. Um, and we were just transitioning to a big high-rise office. So we were still working from home at this point. We would go to his place. Um, and he says he wants to send out a campaign. So there's a web developer there, there's me and there's Ron, and we're each doing a different thing for the campaign to set it up. <clears throat> and we send it to the CEO and he calls us into his office, which is in his apartment. <laughs> and uh, we go in there and he shows us the, the dashboard. And this is, bef- we aren't on Shopify, but this is a custom dashboard that we had built. And I'm looking at the dashboard and we had never seen the numbers in our life before that. And he said, watch this. <laughs> And he sends a campaign. And when I saw this thing make thousands of dollars. The one email. The one email in like 30 seconds. (laughs) I looked at Ron and we, I knew at that point, I'm addicted to this. Like, this is, I need to be part of this. Like, this is what I want to do. And and it it was that moment that me and Ron got super serious about this. We started dressing like the CEO. We started getting haircuts every week. I bought a briefcase. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. Yeah. Um, But yeah, we worked our asses off. We were working until 2 a.m., 3 a.m. It wasn't uncommon to see the sunrise. Um, Our cars used to get broken into all the time because we'd park on the street. Um, Anyways, it was a, that was a good time. And then we, we left there. Uh, We got equity in the company, but 
Uh, it was vested equity, so we didn't stay long enough. We went to another startup. Uh, they poached us. <laughs> and, and they took pretty much the entire upper management team from here. So they wow. took me, Ron, this guy, Joel, who was running the content marketing. They took <clears throat> Ash. They took a couple other guys. We all went there, and we were getting paid an absurd amount of money here. So you were happy as shit. <laughs> Dude, I was getting, I was 23, 24 years old. I was making over $300,000 a month. <laughs> And uh, we were going into New York and we ran this company. <laughs> we had equity in this company. Like we thought we were the, like, the, like, the coolest guys in town. <laughs> yeah. And like, it was, it was a time, man. And anyways, six months later, we got a cease and desist. Uh, pretty much they found out, Shreds had found out. We had um, gotten in, well, we had gotten poached. Um, so they didn't like that. Um, we had a non-compete at the time. Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we were like really young when we signed that and you never, ever signed a non-compete <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> ever. Um, cause it's, it's the dumbest thing in, in most States. It's not even enforceable, but it is here. Mm -hmm. Anyways, we had to leave that job. Um, yeah. and uh, we're like, all right, man, what do we do now? So me, Ron and Ash start an agency. Like we know enough people in this game and people know who we are now. Let's let's just start doing this for other people. Like, hey, these are the guys who built Shreds. These are the guys who uh, worked at Aloha. Like, people know us now. So we got some big clients, like some really big clients in the nutrition space. Um, Performix, um, some some other big ones, uh, Sparta Nutrition. Flavor God. Flavor God we built in-house at Shreds. Uh, mm. Skinny also at Shreds. And, I mean, Flavor God's huge now. That was Damn. my favorite brand to work on. Yeah. Um, and then we were running that agency for a while until we got to kind of a breaking point. We pretty much were called into a meeting with one of the people we were consulting for, a Sparta Nutrition. And now we had taken their business from zero to a hundred. Like <laughs> they were doing nothing online. They were just doing everything B2B and it was whatever. It was just floating their business. We had taken them to another level to the point where we're, we're at GNC pitching them. Jeez. Yeah. Um, they kind of wanted to restructure our original agreement with um, the way we went about percentage of uh, revenue, just because now we're making more. <laughs> <laughs> You're making too much. Yeah, we're making too much. And we're like, fuck this, man. Uh, I, remember, I still remember we went to lunch and uh, they said, let's, let's do this collagen thing. <laughs> like it's, it's on the come up, you know, that pro <laughs> protein company, Vital Proteins. And it was like, that was like right when they had just gotten acquired and it was, it was, it was on the come up and nobody had been the second player in that to take any market space away from them. Um, so we thought this was really good. And, and the Google trends look nice. The Amazon trends look good. Uh, so like, all right, let's get into it. We, to get that product launched, we were at bare bones minimum. Uh, I think we had $5,000 in the bank each. <laughs> and uh, you spent all the money you guys made? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did it go? That's typical like, like guys strippers, what are you doing? Money, yeah. But money, money. Doing with the money. Imagine you're 23 years old uh, and you're thinking this is going to last. So you're just ripping yeah. the money. I got equity in this company. We're going to yeah. sell this thing for, you know, $200 million. Oh, so you, had, you guys had yeah. nothing. <laughs> no, we had nothing. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, wow. Yeah. And it's it's a good learning lesson because you'll never now I'm cheap as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, same. Yeah. Uh, anyways, we had like we had nothing in the bank, so we put most of our money into getting these two products made. It was the same product, two different flavors. What was the product? The our super collagen, which is our first collagen formula. It's very different now, but it's kind of what we had the money to make. And we thought, okay, let's just brand it differently um, than everything on the shelf. Let's just make it pop and make it look like you're selling a Nesquik milkshake and not a supplement. Yeah. Um, like a Yoohoo. Yeah, like a Yoohoo. Like something people are like, oh, I really want to take this. Uh, and our flavors were like Fruit Loops and Cocoa Puffs. Yeah. And so it's like, it, it has something different than what was out there. Um, anyways, we, for the first six months, we didn't make any money. Like we were just breaking even, breaking even. And we can pretty much pay for our office lease at that point. It was bad. And then COVID hit. And I still remember <clears throat> tensions were high at the office. So we were all getting in fights all the time. Just like, do it this way, do it this way, do it, whatever, whatever. Um, COVID hit. And 
I remember we launched our kids protein, which we no longer have anymore. Uh, we launched it and I was driving up to my parents' place because we got a quarantine and I stop at a rest area and I check Shopify and our sales have like 10 X. <laughs> and I have like 150 messages on my phone at this point. And these guys are just like ripping the chat. And I'm like, holy shit, this actually worked. And COVID, what worked though? Yeah, what was like the lever that made The that lever work? that worked was people were seeing the kids protein and that was enough of a hook for them to come to the website and see the rest of the shit. Ah. And, and I guess the rest of the shit wasn't enough of a hook f- to bring them to the website. Yeah, This worked. And it's funny because now COVID has hit. Now everyone's buying vitamins. So we go and release an <laughs> immunity product, like literally two weeks later. Jeez. From my bedroom, we're doing like I'm doing this. I'm yeah. I'm at home for you know months. So what's the kind of like Ankit? Go fucking design something right now. Yeah. Like literally go figure it out. So like <laughs> I'm like kind of a formula nerd too. Okay. Just working in this industry for so long. So like I know what I want in everything and how, what the dosages should be and whatnot. So like I'm ripping these out in my room, like with my mom making me dinner. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> And like, I'm designing till like 6 a.m. in the morning sometimes because like, I got nowhere to go. Yeah. Um, and it was, that was the best three months, man. We released like four new products in those three months. Sales were through the freaking roof. And that's what really catapulted us. At that point, um, you know, retention kicks in. And at, at that point, you're just flying uh, for the next, you know, up till now. Uh, we haven't really looked back. It's just been steadily scaling. And um, I think now... We're at what for forty million? We just passed forty million, so it's like all time yeah. revenue type of thing. There's all time revenue, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We just passed forty million, and we just got to Walmart, which uh, we're hoping adds uh, another ten, thirteen to it. So, yeah. um, I think now we're at a place where now we want to take the brand to another place, which is a national brand, and this is something like. Uh, right now, you know, we've been playing. We've been playing business. Now it's like we're meeting with VCs. We're meeting with private equity firms are meeting with Walmart. Like it, that's real. It's like before it was a Shopify game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I was like, we were getting fucked up the night before. And then like, <laughs> we're getting fucked up while we're at work. <laughs> and now we can't do any of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's definitely less fun, but building, building is still fun and building with people you want to build with, uh, I think just enhances that, that whole experience. See, it's funny because when we did the story with Ron, yeah, it's always a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna ask you the same question. <laughs> a little different. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. That, that's interesting about the non-compete, though. I'm still hung up on that because yeah. it's like, because what benefit does the original company that employed you guys? What benefit do they get by filing a cease and desist on this other company? That is in a totally different <laughs> industry, presumably. Absolutely right? Absolutely nothing. It's- like, <laughs> it, it was what Aloha, you said. Uh, that's where we were. Uh, what, what did that company sell? Was it even the same, same industry or no? It was. They were selling plant-based protein. So oh, it was right. a little bit of the same stuff. If we went to court and we fought it, it wouldn't have probably worked, but we didn't have yeah. any money. Yeah, 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 <laughs> we had blown yeah. it all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What were you spending it on? That's what I'm curious. Oh, uh, man. We were getting bottles of Marquis. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. We were in AC a lot. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah, fancy dinners. It's a lot easier to spend than to make girls. it. Fancy yeah, girls. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot easier to spend than to make it. Yeah, right? yeah, no, oh, absolutely. Yeah. And it goes by quick. Yeah. yeah. No, but it was, I'm glad that that happened to us in like the span of a year or two. You learn the lesson yeah, quick. Yeah, learn the lesson yeah, quick. Yeah. I'd rather not have that, have to learn that lesson at this point in my yeah. life. <laughs> For yeah. sure, for yeah. sure. I feel like everybody's got to go through that at one point. Like 100%. everyone you talk to, that's like uh, successful. Yeah, like they've they've been through those the troughs, and you talk to them, they're like, yeah, like I'm glad that happened because yeah. now I'm more conscious with like how I spend and what whatever it might be. Hundred and ten percent. I'm curious with this though. How'd you guys come up with the name? Like, what the hell does the name even mean? Yeah, it's obvi. <laughs> what does that mean? Like, obviously, like, obviously, yeah. what? right? Collagen, yeah. like. <laughs> No, so um, I remember I told you we were at lunch and we were like, let's do this college and thing. I'd come home um, and it's pretty mad. Like we had, we were drinking at lunch. So <laughs> I got on my laptop, I actually created the first Avi label that night and I was watching Mean Girls. <laughs> and, <laughs> and they kept on saying, they kept, so Avi. Yeah, they kept saying something like that. And I'm like, wait, <laughs> let's just call it that. <laughs> um, there was no like real... A lot of meaning behind it other than that it's like we could we could build a brand around this 
because you're going after a female market yeah. too. So it makes sense to appeal to their Absolutely. desires and interests. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's like, it's also just kind of random. It's like, you know, you just talked about working for a company called Aloha and yeah. they sold supplements. Like what is Aloha and supplements have exactly. anything to do with each other? Nothing at all. No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. kind of funny. But that's what the DDC landscape is now. It's just like, how do you create something that's like, that's more uh, mass market and you know mass market appeal. Yeah, you're not gonna call it like collagen Lee because then like nobody's gonna really care. Yeah, that's how you stand out. Exactly. I think people want to be part of a brand, not like an actual product. So yeah. uh, we wanted to make sure that it was gonna be something that even if we didn't sell collagen, it could be something totally different. And because um, at that point, when you're starting a company you can't put all your eggs in one basket. Like, I'm not going to say, hey, what, like, what if college like, did not take off? <laughs> like, Try something else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's one of those things. If you had college in my name or something like that, it's... it's well, it's true. They have to change yeah, the whole name. Yeah, really hyper specific. Yeah, yeah that, that's, like, that's what I've been thinking about recently too. Like, because we have, like, we have a couple of clients that we're always encouraging to expand their product line. Yeah. And some of them have names that are like so laser focused to the one product. Mm -hmm. We're like, what's your, you know, your five-year goal? Like, yeah. where are you going to expand into? And then we have others that like coincidentally have names that like are kind of universal and you can add more products to. And we're like, you're going to go so much further. And we give them ideas and they're like, holy shit. Like, I'm glad I named it this way. And I didn't even think about it, you know? hundred yeah. percent. Like we sell, like we were selling a damn candle couple <laughs> two months ago candles. an obby candle like like if i had named it something with collagen it just wouldn't have made sense <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's collagen candle. Candle. It's an obvious candle <laughs> yeah um i'll do i'll do this how, how, how'd you make the logo yeah how'd you oh, make yeah, the yeah. logo we're looking at the, the logo sure. the yeah, bunch yeah, over there that's yeah why. no um i so my usual process is i'll download 100 200 font. like i'll go as long as i need to until i find what works it's, and I use the typeface as a starting point. And then usually you have to manipulate the typeface to make it look how you want it to look. And this was, this was I don't know why it was so easy. I think it was meant to be easy. <laughs> <laughs> I downloaded it uh, and I'm like, oh, this is a nice font. And then I put a little stroke around it, put a period at the end. And then I just tilted that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and it worked. And I was I, I liked what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Boom, $50 million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it, it's crazy. These guys, like the dynamic is, I think a lot of people. What's up, New Money Talks fam? Quick one for our sponsors over at Ad Copy AI. Tony Mastalone and his team have produced one of the most revolutionary marketing tools to date called Ad Copy AI. And what it does is essentially harnesses the power of AI in order to lead your uh, acquisition systems and strategies for your marketing efforts, right? So whether you're selling physical products or digital products, it is much more tailored and targeted for marketers relative to something like a chat GPT. And I wanna really quickly show you how it works. So let's say my buddy's company, Javi Coffee, he wants me to run ads for his brands and, and populate uh, ad copy, what I would do is I would come over to the ad copy AI Chrome extension, I'd click create Facebook copy, and I'd provide some inputs, right? So this is the input category. So this is going to be javicoffee.com. Target audience are going to be young Starbucks addicts. <laughs> and then, you know, it, you can also have selling points populate directly from the product URL. And they have something called a creativity amplifier, which is really unique. So the more creative you make it, the more kind of create, you know, obviously creativity they can pull into the copy. Um, it might not be incredibly accurate for what it is that you're going to be selling. And so you have to kind of play around with the creativity amplifier, right? So if you make this very low, it's going to be a very cookie cutter response depending on your inputs, right? So it might be like regurgitated, but when you have the creativity amplifier up, it gets very, very creative and it can spit out some really cool outputs, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on generate Facebook ad copy, and we're going to let copy AI, add copy AI, do its magic. Boom. So we have elevate your coffee experience, tired of the same old Starbucks routine, meet Javi coffee, your new coffee obsession crafted for true coffee lovers, our premium micro dose coffee concentrate packs a punch of flavor and energy in every drop. This is so good. This is something way better than what I could do. Honestly, what any other human could likely do. And it generated that in seconds and Pretty soon they're gonna have an update that directly imports this into your Facebook ads manager. So you don't even have to leave the platform, right? So shout out to Tony and the team over at Ad Copy AI. Definitely check out the link in our description if you're interested in getting this for you, for your brand, or for your agency. And make sure that you tell Tony or you tell the Ad Copy team that New Money Talks sent you so you can get that New Money Talks discount. Now back to the podcast. Don't wanna step on each other's toes as far as what they do. 
they've never had any real pushback as far as like, hey, we should do it this way or that way. Sometimes they'll be like, uh, like, this looks like shit. Yeah, they look. This looks like. Sh-. But again, they also have no idea what looks like shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like half the shit they're doing looks like shit. <laughs> um, so it's like I can't even like that. I love to have their opinions when when the, when they're like good opinions. Like okay, hey, something something educate like with thought. Like okay, hey, what if we didn't do it in black because uh, everything is black? You want to make it stand like if you had some, something behind it other than. Hmm, I don't know, man. Just not feeling it. Like that. Right. Like, <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck? Yeah. Is that, what are you not so feeling? Man. What are you not feeling? <laughs> yeah. Um, the first one. So when we made the whole label pink, um, there was actually some hesitation um, on their part as far as like, hey, should we be this different than what's on the market? Mm-hmm. And and now I'm double saying, like, I'm double guessing myself. And it's like one of those things was like, we just used all our money to do this. If I'm the one who fucks this up, like, fuck. <laughs> yeah, fuck. So this has to work. Eventually, they were like, yeah, let's just go with it. Thank God. Um, but it ended up working. But like, those are just like key decisions you have to make. And it really could decide the trajectory of a company. How, yeah. how do you trust yourself that like you actually make? I feel like you, you're confident as hell with all these decisions yeah. right now. Like, how do you how do you feel confident? Right now? Like, how do you know that damn now this, this is it? Yeah, um, I I would much rather die um by sitting on my own sword like (laughs) like i i like it's one of those things like if you're at a casino and you're playing blackjack and you get 16 you're just gonna stay every time or there's gonna be a couple times where you're like let me take this into my own hands (laughs) and try to (laughs) try to make this work so it's one of those things where like i don't want to have something fail and then me to look back on it and been like oh man i shouldn't have let fucking Richard do it. <laughs> I, I, I should have done, do done it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I shouldn't have listened to this bozo. <laughs> it's so just one of, and then our first place we worked, our CEO at Shreds, he uh, instilled a lot of confidence in us. And like, he made everybody feel like they're, the people who are making it there, he made them feel like you're about to be fucking loaded. You want, you need to walk into every room like you own it. You need to be shaved every day. Like he, he kind of made this lifestyle. And it's one of those things where it's like, a part of that never left me is like, I am the best. And whether I am or not, it doesn't matter because as long as I think I'm the best, I'm that's, that's how you're going to succeed. Yeah. That's a crazy yeah, line cool. right there. We're <laughs> clipping that one. You editors, <laughs> make sure you clip that thing right yeah. there. I, I didn't, I didn't know that they did you guys dirty like that with this, with the season assist though. Cause Ron was like, yeah, that's where I developed my work ethic. We learned so much from there, but you know, I mean, you know, other than the season decision, you don't really have anything negative to say about no. it. You're like uh, I, I more have pros and cons. The utmost respect for those guys. Yeah. And I still talk to a lot of those guys. It was a, is a thing in the moment that happened. And honestly, you look back at it. Thank God you sent me a cease and desist because yeah, I yeah, wouldn't yeah. have started this company. Yeah, so, that's true. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you not only gave me the opportunity, but I mean, you gave me the opportunity to fail. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, and and the skills. Yeah, really and the it. skills, man. It was like those are invaluable. It was. I did four years in college. I don't think I learned a thing. And then <laughs> <laughs> I came here, and in that two three years that we were there, man, it was like being paid a lot of money to go to college. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what were you doing all day? Like designing. Illustrator all day. Uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, whatever they needed. Um, they, so when I started there, they had built me an eight-man design team, like kind of when we started scaling the company. So it was like, I was really young to be put in that position, especially with a company that's at that point, like $50 million. Um, it's, you had to grow up fast. Yeah. And even if you didn't know any something, I just, I used to say, I know it and I'd go figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. And, and that's that's how you got to do it. You fake it till you make it. Like some people say that doesn't work, but that that works. <laughs> dress like how you want to dress. Yeah, you got to have conviction. <laughs> yeah, have conviction. Be intentional with all the decisions you make. Jeez. So that place is a mess. <laughs> <laughs> that was a crazy place, man. It's like Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> I, I have another question. You guys have done a whole bunch of collabs with like big companies, right? Like Entenmann's, I think it was yeah. one of them. Is that like always a hard mar- uh, branding thing? Because like you have to like follow their rules, your rules. Like, what does that whole process look like? Yeah. So brand licensing. Um, oh, it's called it's, it's called brand licensing. Yeah. Right? So what, what, what you, what's even that? Talk yeah, about that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you guys are 
familiar with the company Ghost uh, Proteins. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of licensing deals with like Chips Ahoy, Oreo, Warhead, Sour Patch Kids. I think like their flavors are uh, based on those flavor profiles. Um, we got into it with Entiment. The process really is, and I think most people are using this process, you'll get a broker. Um, and these are licensing brokers. And there are actual conventions in Las Vegas where it's like a licensing convention, where it's a bunch of companies, a bunch of big brands that are willing to license their um, IP to you, whether it's in a flavor form, but you know, it really depends on the product, how you're, how you're utilizing that brand. Um, these brokers will go there and they'll engage them and then they'll come back to you with like, who's interested and whatnot. Gosh, You'll give them a deck and just pass it around. And you have to pay these companies? You, you pay the broker. It really depends on how the deal is. Some brokers will kind of just do it for free until you get the deal and then Got they'll it. take a percentage. Um, but yeah, so the way we got Entiments was a very similar thing. A broker had hit us up. They said Entiments very uh, interested. And we saw them as a potential fit because a lot of the consumers that we're targeting are within that kind of Entiments uh, age range where they kind of grew up on it. You're looking at your 35 to 45 year old women. Um, so these are the people that are, you know, buying it for them, buying it for their husbands, buying it for their kids. Mm -hmm. And these, this is the exact demo that we want to target. So, um, it, it just kind of worked out perfectly as far as the design portion of it. Um, it really depends on the brand. Um, Entiments didn't give us much pushback. I think the first iteration of the label I sent them was more our branding and they wanted more of their stuff on it. So we kind of changed it to a kind of a blue look. Uh, just to make it look more like them. But then you also get into kind of a, a thing where you're like, am I sacrificing the brand integrity now uh, by trying to do what they want to do? Mm. Um, now, you know, two years later, would I have done that in the design sense? Again, no, because um, Walmart picked up our flavors and not the Entenmann's flavors. Oh, nice. Oh. So it's like, what if I had made the Entenmann's look like us <laughs> and <laughs> would they have picked that up? Um, but these, again, these are learning experiences. Um, we're actually in talks with a big company, uh, right now we, we pitched to high C. So, uh, we're waiting, yeah. we're waiting for them oh, to, uh, get back to us. But even if it doesn't, these, these opportunities, they come around. Somebody pitched us, uh, Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> oh, shoot. So I guess this person. You, you have her on the. <laughs> yeah. Like. You know how Marilyn Monroe, she was around in like the 50s and 60s yeah, yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so she, her favorite um, like flavor is banana milkshake. Like those old school banana yeah. banana milkshakes, like the banana splits. Um, anyways, they're like, yeah, this person owns their IP somehow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So they're like, we'll license her IP out so you can put her on your bottle and say it's a Marilyn Monroe collagen. And that's a cool. That's pretty that's sick. sick. Yeah. <laughs> So like, is that her family owns it? I don't know who owns it. Yeah, right, yeah. I think these things are sometimes just like sold off. I don't like, you know how she had kind of a weird story. Like she didn't have a lot of family. Yeah, so. I see. yeah. Um, and then Barbie. That's sick though. They, Barbie would be cool. Dude, they pitched the us that two everything. they pitched us that two years ago before the movie. And I wish we had just taken it. <laughs> how did they even find you guys two years ago though? Uh, two years ago, this is probably a year after we started. Oh shit! Yeah. Like... it was around the time we got Entiments. Okay, damn, damn, damn. Yeah. Wow, Barbie's sick. Yeah. Go back to them, hit them up. Be like, yeah, that'd be yeah. dope. Yeah, man. I mean, I don't think so anymore. <laughs> 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 like, it's probably a lot. Like, it, they're gonna take a lot more than they would have back then. Yeah, it was a dirt cheap sense. deal too. It just didn't. Uh, we just does, does it actually perform well though? These things. It really, it really depends on the time you put into it. You really got to get into your brand campaigns with these things. Performance is not going to really push the needle on this kind of stuff. It are people on if you're pitching performance marketing, you're you're trying to get somebody on a one-time buy type of thing. Yeah, you really got to uh, stroke the ego of this consumer. Like really, really massage this consumer and show them a lot of brand stuff. Um, we when we've we've taken people through our intimates funnel, it's done very well. Um, but it's an expensive funnel. So it's, it depends on like what, like how, how much of the cost are you going to be eating just to do all this branding? Mm. I have a question actually about funnels. You brought that up. Yeah. Does every Avi product have a different funnel? Yeah. Like you guys like drive traffic to every single one of them? No. Okay. Um, I think 
and Ash, correct me if I'm wrong tomorrow. <laughs> um, but I'm pretty sure that we're just pushing the stuff that does well for that us. Makes sense, yeah. And we're we're testing other SKUs as well, but those are on much lower budgets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys test a lot though. Like, yeah, lot. that's the name of the game. I mean, if you're not testing, then you're just you're not moving. Because you were telling me before, you have like a few content studios you guys work with. Like, you do a lot of like that stuff. Like, talk yeah. about that too. Yeah, yeah. So um, right now we work with, just to get our creative, most people don't have creative in-house and we do, we do a lot of uh, the design work in-house, a lot of the editing work in-house. But as far as getting footage and things like that, we have content studios that we outsource to. Uh, we have one in Denver, Bird Hill, he's great. Um, and what we do is we'll pretty much, you know, send, he knows us by an hour. We don't have to like really direct him on the shoots and things like that. But definitely when you're starting a brand, you want to be super, super involved in directing those shoots. Really get your photographer. If you think this is somebody that's going to be with you long term, understanding your entire brand aesthetic, um, that'll save you a lot of time because down the line, if you're a founder, you're not going to have time to attend all these shoots or create all these briefs. Yeah. There's a lot of guys in e-commerce that don't talk like you though. Yeah. Like, the word aesthetic <laughs> like doesn't, it's not in conversation. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's kind of crazy. Like, I feel like it's very important, but no one thinks it's important. Yeah. All the stuff you're talking about, right? I think it's really unfortunate kind of, kind of the way the e-commerce community sometimes has been built out. Um, it's a lot of performance marketers and media buyers who they're not, they're not creatives. And um, a lot of them think they are. And I'm sure they have a, an eye for it. But if you're not taught in the like the actual skill sets of being a creative, like there are actual rules to design that like, you need to follow those rules. And going outside of those rules, it totally works. But if you don't understand the game in general, then don't play the game. <laughs> well, look, what's an example of some of these rules you're talking about? Like yeah, so it's just things like spacing between elements. Uh, you want kerning which is the space between single letters the letting which is the space between lines mm. it's it's like even the grids you use your, your grid system has to look good what do you mean by grid system so when you're like, just, like the positioning on the frame yeah um like so i i use a swiss grid system um when i start any photoshop or illustrator project or indesign project this same like pretty much it's an invisible grid goes on your goes on your oh um, interesting on your uh, canvas. screen. Yeah, it's a canvas. But this way, you can think about the spacing in a lot different ways. And the way you visualize it can be a lot more organized. A lot of people, you start on a blank canvas, you're just throwing stuff at a wall yeah. and seeing if it sticks. Like, yeah. that's just and not how you do it. How does this all help though? Yeah, so it's gonna, there's a lot of things like color theory and just ways you look at something that'll either put strain on the eyes or relax your eyes. And mm -hmm. what you wanna do is you wanna relax your eyes. Um, things like font sizes and types of fonts you use, whether it's like a, a serif or a sans serif or a slab serif, like these are different things that you need to use for different situations, whether it be headers or body copy. Those are two different font styles. That's crazy. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's like consumer psychology Yeah. at the end of the day. And you've been studying this for the last oh, yeah. six years. I went to school for this. So mm -hmm. granted, I did get to learn about a lot of the this, like I used to make type from scratch. <laughs> like, what, what do you mean type? Like I'd, I'd make fonts from scratch by pretty oh, much wow. creating grids. And then by getting everything, you have to make everything the right size. Like yeah. there's different things, there's different rules. Um, I worked in a print shop, so I know how printing is done. Oh, shoot. Even, even digital to print. Most, a lot of designers in the e-com game, they're doing everything in digital. And then, then their label looks like shit. <laughs> oh, cool. On the screen looks different than when you print yeah, it out, right? There's a yeah. lot more light that's coming on your on your yeah, file, yeah. so it looks yeah. a lot brighter. But when you get it, it's like dull as shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. damn! This is the people don't think about. Like also, like also, like the matte and like the glossy, all the yeah. paper stuff is probably important too. The varnishes. Labels. It's a lot of different tactile finishes. Uh, people don't think about it. Now, whether you know it's glossy or spot gloss or whatever you're using, um, there needs to be a sense of like, um, what's the word I'm looking for? There needs to be a sense of intention when doing those things. It's not just, oh, this looks cool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you, like, you gotta be doing things for a certain reason, whether it's your hierarchy, which what do you want people to see first? Mm. Um, what do you want to highlight? So if it's a brand, the logo, you know, is it the product name, whatever it is, but. These are things people aren't paying attention to. Sometimes when you look at something, you don't know what to read first. 
you want to sh- tell them what to read first. I like the way it's structured. The way like it's that. structured. Interesting. Yeah. And before you're mentioning like the importance between like performance marketing and creatives and how they have to like coincide, you know, they have to coexist with each other. Right. I, as a media buyer myself, I would, I would say that creatives and offer is more important than media buying every day of the week. Cause like, Media buying is it, eventually that can is going to be more tailored towards AI. And yeah, it's going to like all these algorithms are start get to, get to the point where yeah. you do no targeting. You just plug in your creatives, like you set a budget, and you're like, here, you you figure out how to do it. Yeah, and so the you know while it's important, <clears> and you know it could be the difference between a company doing 10k a day and 30k a day. It's you're not going to get to either 10k a day or 30k a day without really good creatives, really good offer, really good design. Absolutely. And like that's like the pillar of the foundations to be able to build a successful company. So when we work with brands now, like we've been trying to incorporate creative and content and design into the offer more because you know we're we're incredibly good at what we do on the marketing yep. side, but without a really good offer and really good creatives, no amount of ad strategy is going to get an offer or a brand to to take off. You know exactly. And um, I see it sometimes with Ash where. I can't get around to uh, designing something for him. So he'll go to somebody else and he'll get it. And he's trying to push this thing, push this thing, push this thing. And Ash is, you know, one of the best media buyers, if not the best that I know. And sometimes that that's just not going to move the needle. Like yeah. you, you need some structure, you need some infrastructure that you're building on and something else that you're pushing towards the consumer, not just hey, this is my product and it's 50% off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me six new creatives <laughs> of this book in yeah. the next three days. <laughs> yeah. Like there's a lot. Are you doing like video creatives too? Like editing and stuff like that? No. So I, I'll get on that side of it more for just the aesthetics. Uh, but we have an in-house editor. Okay. Um, and then again, we get a shit ton of content from different content banks, content houses. Um, and what's performing better, video or image for you guys? So It's really weird. Um, so video for a long time was crushing. And, and most of our uh, ad spend goes to Facebook. Mm-hmm. Um, video is crushing for a long time. And we've just kind of recently seen an uptick in the static images. So mm-hmm. I don't know if that's coming back around. I know it, it always fluctuating. Yeah. It's either static or it's video. It's, static, yeah. it's just going up and down. But yeah. I feel like maybe static's coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we, we've been noticing that. That, uh, static images have been it's weird like they'll be cheaper in cost yeah so like the conversion rate and all that stuff like it might not be as good but it'll be so much cheaper cost like yeah. cpms yep. that it'll actually get a higher return on ad spend whereas like the videos they get they get people more engaged yeah but there's a lot of pieces of the video or the creative element of it that like might get flagged or might rub, rub Facebook the wrong way and have a higher CPM. It's very interesting. It's crazy, dude. It's a black hole. You never know yeah. what's no going on. No one knows what the hell's going on. <laughs> no one knows what's yeah. going on on TikTok, Facebook, nothing. <laughs> How's TikTok for you guys? Um, I think it was doing well at a certain point, but I think we've pulled budget on that for now. That I mean, you're going out to middle aged women, like yeah, the most that's true. often that's on true. TikTok. Yeah, it's just it wasn't it was working for us for a bit, but again, no one knows what the hell's working. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so it's like, let, let's not test that right now. We can test it later. Yeah. One, one thing you mentioned before was uh, how you weren't so much in a managerial role and you just work better when other people are telling you what to do. Yeah. So, right? I mean, I, I, dude, even I've, I'm experiencing that. I think we both experience that sometimes where it's like, shit, like we're the boss of this fucking company with yeah. dozens of employees and we have to be telling everyone what to do, but no one's really telling us what to do. Yeah. And we don't know what the fuck to do. Yeah. yeah. So there's like instances where <laughs> exactly. you're like, we're like, all right, what do I do next? And you're like, you have to, you just have to figure it out and yeah. you have to be the one who's pulling all the strings. And sometimes you're just like, shit, I wish I was just in a position where someone else was telling me what to do and I could just fucking do it. Cause like we have no problems execute, like we're executors. Yeah. The talent's like, there. <laughs> sometimes the conceptualization of yeah. what needs to be done. Yeah, seriously. You're like, shit, no one's telling me what to do. I got to figure this shit out on yeah. my own. No, uh, 110%. And, you know, Ash and Ron, they get down on me a lot because I don't want to be a founder yeah. of the company <laughs> where I'll, you know, I'll act like one of the employees at the company as yeah. in, as in something will, will change some policy at the office or something. And I'll be like upper management, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, low key when the employees like, I'll have a be like, Hey, I need like a pay raise. I'd be like, don't talk to me. Talk to the oh, boss. Me too, <laughs> man. Talk to the boss. I'm not the boss. Even all hands meetings, man. I tell, they'll be like, Hey, at the end of every meeting, they'll be like, okay, if you guys have any questions, you can come to me, uh, Ash or Ankit. And every time I'll say, don't come to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's just, it's one of those things though. Um, I, I, it's not one of my skills managing, but I still have to do it. And, but I do it in a way that it benefits me. 
Okay. Um, and it benefits me in like, how am I going to get the most out of this person? You can either go and empower somebody and you can go that route and l- kind of let them become like this really amazing employee, somebody who kind of develops a skill set just like you. Like that's, that's the dream. But for the short term purpose. What's up, New Money Talks fam? We just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Scale Brands. This is a self plug because this is my direct consumer marketing agency uh, where we help D2C brands grow through paid advertising and brand growth consulting. And I can confidently say that we are among the best at what we do because I've actually built my own brands to upwards of $1.7 million a month. I've built multiple brands to multi six figures per month as well. Very, very profitably, might I add. And we are specialists at helping brands grow. So if you are an e-commerce brand and you are looking to streamline your ad creative acquisition, uh, you're looking to grow your paid acquisitions uh, channels, and you're looking to be able to implement systems and frameworks that are backed by over eight figures in profitable ad spend and close to nine figures in attributed direct consumer e-commerce revenue, then Scale Brands is the agency for you. So again, if you run an e-commerce brand or you know someone who runs a direct consumer e-commerce brand, send them over to scalebrands.com and make sure that you tell them that New Money Talks sent you so you can get that New Money Talks discount. Now back to the podcast. This is, I want to use you as an arm. Like the things that are tedious in time for me, those are the things I want you to do for me. They're not hard to do, but those are the things. Because eventually, if they can do those things for me, now I trust you to take on a, more of a decision-making role, conceptualizing role, and I'll actually trust your ideas. But the funny part is, man, a lot of these people, they don't make it past that part. <laughs> yeah, they can't do the basic things. The You're basics. like, I can't even trust you to do a harder thing. And yeah. it's really tough to explain, especially to these guys, Ron and Ash, that you training somebody to be a a numbers guy is a lot different than training somebody to be a designer and they'll somebody will come in and they'll work there for two weeks or something and i'll be like hey man we gotta let this guy go he's not doesn't have it they'll say hey you didn't take enough time to teach him how to design i'm not here to teach anyone how to design (laughs) (laughs) they should have came here to be able to design they gotta have some prerequisites coming in yeah this is (laughs) this ain't college (laughs) this is art school (laughs) yeah like you come in here and, and be a designer. And, and I, I, honestly, I want them to be better than I am. Yeah. Because if they have the talent to be better than I am, then, okay, there's something to work with there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's just a lack of talent in this kind of space we're in right now where a lot of people think they're designers because they uh, design for a lot of performance marketing brands. And if you start off designing for performance marketing, mm you're, you're never going to, you're never going to make it <laughs> because you start off with bad habits. Like, and performance marketing is great. Okay. That's something you do after you've learned all the things like that you're supposed to like the real way to do it. Yeah. Um, what, what's a bad habit you see over and over and over again? <laughs> we'll be here all day, <laughs> man. It's crazy. It's just, it's the easiest part of it is a lot of these guys, they'll come in as a, as a Photoshop expert or they'll come in as an Illustrator expert or they'll come in as an InDesign expert or an XD expert or Figma. No, I can't find anybody who does it all anymore. And, mm-hmm. and at least when I was in school, we were taught every single software. And I think a lot of what happened is print went to shit. So people stopped learning Illustrator and InDesign and they just stuck on Photoshop for performance marketing. And what ends up happening there is you need Illustrator to create UIs now (laughs) and you never learned it. I see. And the the landscape is changing so much with the way uh, software is just keep updating like XD. Like I love XD, but I I couldn't like use that software if I didn't know Illustrator and only Photoshop. It's just never going to work. I see what you're saying. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you you think there's also though a value of like trying not to be a jack of all trades and and being specialized in one category of, you know, graphic design, editing, whatever it might be, but like knowing all of the others as prerequisites, like foundationally. That's a hundred percent. What I would say is like, that's, that's how you should be. Yeah. If you love packaging, man, be a packaging guy. Yeah. But if I need you over here, yeah, you, <laughs> you better be able to do on. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's one of those things that like you can do what you love to do. I don't love to do everything. There's things I like to do and things yeah. I don't like to do, but as long as you're able to get in there and you're able to, you know, be able to be useful and actually be able to produce quality work in all those different softwares, that's all I care about. Whether you're going to actually do, be doing that is doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, 
Oh, you, you have some uh, there was one thing on the tip of my tongue. I was yeah. we always um, do that. It, it was, <laughs> it, so it was regarding um when we were talking, you know, when we first sparked the conversation about like, you know, being your own boss and having to manage yourself. I was listening to a, a podcast with Andy Frisella, if you guys yeah. know who that is. Absolutely. Um, has a couple of huge companies, but he's he was like, one when I changed this one thing, my company started taking off. My personal life started getting better. I started to be less stressed, whatever. And he was like, instead of looking at it as like, I'm working for myself, he was, he like took himself outside of his body. And he was like, he's like, nah, I'm working for like this badass motherfucker, Andy over here. Yeah. And like, I'm going to do every, everything that I can every day to make him happy and to make sure that he doesn't fire me. And so that's how he treats running his company is kind yeah, of as yeah. an employee yeah. of himself, but like he disassociates himself as like this other guy that he's working for. And he's like, that's a badass motherfucker. I got to do, like, I got to be a top performer or he's going to fire me yeah. and I'm going to lose all of this that I've built. And I was like, that's a cool ass fucking way of looking at it. Absolutely, dude. It's almost like you got to tell yourself whatever story is going to make you perform at your optimal level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And something I always tell myself is I always need an enemy. And your enemy could be anybody. <laughs> it could be your friend. It could be your mom. It could be your girlfriend. It could be your coworker, your co-founder. I always need some motherfucker to prove wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even if someone says something that isn't doesn't sound that bad, I'll blow it up in my head. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, this yeah. motherfucker's coming I'll after me. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. He's yeah. coming at me. He doesn't know who I am. Don't <laughs> <Yeah>. right now. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the things that sometimes it'll get you to 3 a.m., 4 a.m. work yeah. nights. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you put on some motivational champion music. <laughs> <laughs> And you make that damn landing page. <laughs> <laughs> you tweet that logo. Yeah. <laughs> that spacing is it right there. <laughs> so, so you're involved a lot on like the CRO side, like the conversion optimization stuff? or uh, I'll do it in a design perspective, but as far as the testing and stuff, I'll leave it to these guys. I don't yeah. want to be part of that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you guys use Carl by any chance? Carl. Carl Weish, you like did a bit of podcast with him. He like I think he posted once like uh he does it on Twitter where like, he'll post like the website now and like oh if I were to change it'll it, like it'll a, kind of like a free audit. Okay, like, he'll, like I think I've seen change, that. Yeah. Like the home pages of the websites and like it's super smart. Yeah, and they come out really clean. Really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, like, I don't know. Maybe he talks about the Udi all the time. That's like yeah, his favorite yeah, yeah. brand. I don't U even know. Udi. They did that. Udi. Oh, Udi. Like, Udi. I don't know. It's like uh, uh, Davy Fogarty. Um, this the Australian guy. He has like a. He has like an it's aggregation. A snuggie. It's literally a oh, snuggie. Just, yeah, right. pretty much a snuggie. <laughs> okay. It's like the Australian right. snuggie, but they brought over the US yeah. as well. Okay. He keeps saying that. <laughs> you just watch this whole laugh because it's always the only <laughs> he, he had like the calming yeah. blanket, I think Davey Fogarty and a couple yeah. other brands he's invested in. But okay. he built, I mean, he built yeah. that up to like 300 million plus. Jesus. Yeah. Well, this CRO thing sounds like everyone's like, talking about the last like yeah. six yeah. months is like the new thing Dude, it's there's, like, even, there's one guy who was a competitor of ours in the digital marketing space but and he changed his whole model from like we're an advertising agency to like we do cro but it's not conversion rate optimization it's conversion revenue optimization so he focuses more on like AOV <laughs> and LTV. And it's just a different way to package the same shit. No, he should different. just change his name though. <laughs> <laughs> like that's so damn confusing. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the new thing, the CRO, though. Yeah, I think a lot of all these CRO agencies are popping up. I mean, I know we use a, a CRO agency right now. Um, but again, <laughs> I don't, to be honest, I don't know if it's moving the needle. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a waste of money. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only so much you can do. I mean, like yeah. there's an infinite amount of things to split test, but they're like so infinitely small that like <laughs> yeah. how, how much of a macro impact can they make? That's what it is. It's like, yeah, I'll see uh, the slightest, you know, spike here. And it's like on a on an overall basis, this, is this ever going to be something that'll <laughs> help the company? Yeah, you know? for sure. And then like a week later, you relaunch like, version one and it starts performing better yeah. and then like this 10,000 no, landing page and then just you're just out. confused as fuck yeah. <laughs> what, what, what do you think about all those companies that like a lot of like ones in like New York that do this and like LA do this they'll, they'll raise a few million dollars yeah they'll come out with this beautiful looking site oh yeah and then the uh, it's shot. Yeah. Like, what do you think about all that? They oh, like, the, the, man. What's it called? Like, Red Antler? I think the, the name of that uh, brand you see. Like, something Antler. Okay. Like, they just spent a shit ton of money on yeah. these websites. Like, 40K, yeah. 50K. Yeah. Like, does that hurt you on the inside? No, it does because it's a, it's a waste of money. Yeah. Um, Like, dude, 
these these companies that, especially the ones in New York, like you'll see these beautiful brands come out and there's nothing behind the, like this is what I'm saying is like, I'm a brand marketer and that's always going to be my thing. But now you need some performance behind that beautiful <laughs> brand. Yeah. So yeah. unless you got those guys also cooking, like you, you really do need both sides of things. And it's where we were really lucky where the three of us, when we came together, we all had different skill sets and they were vastly different skill sets. So it was, it worked out really well, but I know that's not, that's not the same for everybody, Yeah. but I, I'd say probably just, you have to look for those, find, hang out with people who are better at things than you. Um, don't hang out with people who do the same stuff as you. That makes <laughs> sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, then you don't get to change your perspective on yeah. things. Like, it's all, you're just talking about the same stuff same all the time. Same stuff. Yeah, I, 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 there was one, uh, I hope they don't watch this, but there was one client of uh, my girlfriend's agency that she works with. And they, I mean, their retainers are multi five figures a month. Keep yeah. in mind. <laughs> and they literally just, it, it's basically like a women's like head towel. Like that's yeah. all it really is, like a fancy version of that. And like they're, they spent no money on Facebook. They spent no, no money on marketing, nothing like that. They probably put like 40, 50 grand into this thing. And then they're, now they're paying, you know, maybe twenty thirty thousand dollars a month retainer. And they have no, they have no foundation. Like they don't have 50 sales to their company's name. <laughs> and so it's like, but that's the worst. To us, like we come from that like drop shipping space yeah. where like, the whole objective is to start as lean as possible. Yeah. And I think like, and I think dropshipping gets a bad rap, but it's honestly like, it's very smart in the beginning. If you, especially if you want to learn all these skills yeah. because you start with such little risk and then you develop all the skills that are actually needed to build a big brand. Yes. But like without forking over $20,000 of inventory, like just off rip without having proof of concept in the product at all, you know? It, it's ridiculous. The amount people, I think it, what, where it comes down to is the way people think it, businesses are built are not the way businesses are built. And, uh, you know, people put out their Shopify numbers and whatnot on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. And, and you kind of like, and they're only talking about their good stuff, yeah. like, uh, and how easy it was. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and you're like, oh, let me do it too. And you don't take into account all these other little things you need to do. And it is, it is hard. <laughs> like yeah. it, None of this is easy. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a lot of people who are really delusional out there. <laughs> yeah. Do you think Avi can get bigger online or like all the growth is going to come from like this Walmart stuff, hopefully eventually Target, like big yeah. box, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and I definitely think Walmart is going to even help online a lot. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's going to just, B2B has never been anything more than something to keep us afloat. So uh, now to get into Walmart nationwide, like that's going to be one of those things that's going to be, okay, we need to pick a path here. Are we a B2B business or are we a D2C business? And a lot of founders tell us this is you actually do need to pick a path because your business model changes drastically. You can't be like yeah. omni-channel or whatever. I mean, if you're, if you're perfect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta, like, we don't know B2B at all. And thank God we're working with some really uh, talented people uh, who do know the space and who yeah. are Walmart experts. But it, it's one of those things where every company is going to have to make that decision. I was listening to a podcast the other day, um, this brand, oh, Halo Top. Mm. So they they were shit. They couldn't sell their, they thought they could sell their product online and they couldn't. So, cause obviously it's fucking ice cream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's impossible. yeah. So this was a while, this is, I think it was maybe 10 years ago, um, they got into Whole Foods. They got a Whole Foods account and just completely changed the trajectory of their business. Mm. And um, it, it's, and at that point they were like, all right, fuck online. We're just going to double down on this and get into all the yeah. other retailers. So it's one of those things where some, people are actually hitting us up like Sprouts, um, Whole Foods, and some, some of these companies, the natu natural channel. And we're like, all right, we have to either pick, are we going to actually go into those? Because you can't just say, oh, let's get everyone. Yeah. It's not efficient and it's, it's not process. profitable. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a lot of decision making. Uh, I hope uh, uh, online continues to grow, but it's more of those, one of those things where you got to just look where the numbers are leading you. Mm -hmm. I feel like retail can become so commoditized because when you, if I'm going to a Target, I'm looking for a protein powder, I'm seeing like, this, you know, or I'm seeing the CVS brand or the Target brand that's like $15. And I'm seeing this other premium brand that's like, like $60. Yeah. 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 And it's like, I feel like the conversion, I, I'm not like the conversion rate in terms of how many people <clears> walk <throat> through the store, 
but I feel like you'd just be way less likely to convert someone at a profitable value compared to if you get catch someone on a Facebook ad that that has no other like reference or no other things that could distract them or that they could use as a comparison. Yeah. You're just like, hey, do you have this problem? Here's a solution to it. Like, buy, and then and the solution is priceless at that time because they're not in an environment where they have multiple options, mm -hmm. you know? So do you think it's also because you feel like you have more control of the situation of what's going on? Yeah. Um, yeah. Walmart, you have no control, right? Walmart, you have no control. The way you get good at Walmart is building a good relationship with your buyer who's gonna get you the right shelf space. And the thing is, you think you got to sell all this inventory at Walmart. Now we got picked up nationwide. And that's 40, over 4,100 stores. We only have to sell 0.8 units a week. <laughs> really? <laughs> at, at a store. And we do yeah. double that. <laughs> We're blowing up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So one unit. One unit. Per store. Per store. Per week. Per week. <laughs> that, that's possible. <laughs> yeah. And okay, that, that's doable. Yeah. You don't you don't think about it like uh, again at a normal retailer. That's tough. At Vitamin Shop, Shop GNC, you're not going to make money like that. But because there's 4,100 stores, with then, volume you'll get with there. With volume, it, you're going to get there. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. So, like, so that's like a, the newest pop plan that's happened with you guys. Like, what yeah. are you guys thinking through to actually figure this shit out? Like, like yeah, what, like, like what are the steps? You said you're traveling a lot, of, like <laughs> Arkansas for God's sake. <laughs> that's not even where Arkansas is on the map. Yeah, but, like, you guys trying to get in other countries. Uh, so we're in other countries. We're actually pitching to Walmart Puerto Rico next week. <laughs> oh, <sick. laughs> um, I don't know how that's going to go, but <laughs> well, let's see. Um, yeah. So with the Walmart thing, we're D to C guys. Don't know a lick of retail. We're in vitamin shop and GNC, but that kind of just almost runs itself. Yeah. There's not a lot of things you can do there. Um, with Walmart, you go to this town, Ron was telling me, every single person works at Walmart. Bentonville, Arkansas. Wow. Every single Walmart agency. Now there's ad buying agencies app for Walmart through Walmart Connect. Really? Wait, 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 what do you mean ad buying agencies? So like Walmart Connect is like an Amazon. So you can run ads on Walmart Connect. And there's agencies. Marketplace. To, yeah. to marketplace. Yeah. There's agencies, <laughs> but you got to spend 100K. Wow! So, <laughs> <laughs> Off rip. Yeah. Well, well, it's a mar it's like an Amazon like Amazon marketplace. They're like, trying to make it like an like Walmart.com. Oh, Walmart Walmart okay. Yeah, to run ads wow. on on. You guys spent a hundred racks. Well, we, we haven't started yet. So, <laughs> <laughs> not looking uh, forward to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there's agencies that actually do that for you because none of these retail guys know how to use Walmart Connect. They don't know how yeah, to run ads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> They've yeah. never done that in their life. Um, That's crazy. And it's, it's crazy that there's this whole community of just retail people. Mm. And these brands, there's this one guy we talked to. He has a brand in Walmart, just 500 millionaire. And uh, he's, he doesn't- Can you say which brand this is or no? I can't say uh, it. I can't <laughs> tell you. Yeah. He, uh, he, just no lick of Facebook. They don't even yeah, run yeah, Facebook yeah. ads. <laughs> he doesn't know anything about, he doesn't know how to set, he, they, he had to get an agency where they're paying a shit ton to set up his yeah. Walmart Connect account. Yeah, wow. And it's, and it's crazy that, but they know retail so well, there's a different language they all talk. Yeah. And it, it's, it's insane that we, in a D to C world, we can all kind of talk the same language they're talking a whole other language yeah. and it's really cool to see that these there's a whole other realm here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is everyone older though? I'm assuming everyone's older. Yeah, right? everyone's no older, one's like 20. But, but there's the, no 20s. You'd see there's people are like my age that in their 30s who uh, they've been brought up just through retail. They yeah. never saw the other side of the curtain. Like, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. This is all they know. Um, so yeah, it's really cool to see. Um, so we're working with some really, really, uh, smart people at Walmart. Um, our buyer loves us. Um, and then we're working with a broker who is pretty much going to handle our entire Walmart business, not handle, but point man, the business, lead us in the right way. They do it for a lot of big brands there. Um, you, you try to get like end caps and all this stuff too. That's like, the, you try to do that, that's right? Your, that's how you must, you got to massage the buyer. Like make you, him happy. Yeah. Make him happy. And then you got to also show a little, you know, proof of sales. Like you can't be not selling well and then trying to get an end cap. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah. And from a design perspective, you have, you have to design all like the, if you get an end cap, you have to design all that pretty yeah. much. So yeah, it's, it's funny. All these retail guys, they outsource all their, when they get an end cap, there's an agency that makes the end cap, designs the end cap Jeez. because they don't know how to do any of that. <laughs> um, and like, I'm probably just going to design all of it, any signage or promotions that we have at Walmart. Um, 
but to even to get those things, it's like, it's a lot of, you know, you got to show it, you got to show that you're promoting Walmart on your socials, things like they, even just, I talk to my buyer every day. <laughs> like we're just bullshitting yeah. every day. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so the people he likes, he's going to help out. People he doesn't like, he's not going <laughs> to help, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna help out no matter how good your product so, so is. So the buyer is the guy who like makes the decision of what Walmart's buying for that category yes. for like that season or whatever, like that yeah. month or whatever. Yeah. Interesting. So he has everyone bombarding him, this guy. Yeah, it's it's tough, man, because you can see like everyone is just, they're hitting him up all day, every day. Um, and it's one of those things where now everyone knows he's the Walmart buyer for this category. So uh, yeah. we've noticed that, you know, friends of ours who have, you know, brands in this space, they've been freaking emailing him and stuff. Really? And we're like, guys, <laughs> like, yeah. th that's not how you do it. <laughs> Jeez. Um, that must be a sh good and bad job at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, like people really want your attention, but like you can only choose like the best performing one. Right? Yeah. Because like, literally, worst case scenario, knock on some wood, right? Like if it doesn't <laughs> perform well, you don't give a shit about you. He doesn't care. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. Um, like his job is based on him picking good ones to perform well. Him picking good ones to perform well, and he was, you know, he was pretty um, eager to get us in there. Um, he's like very. Uh, up to date with kind of how the nutrition space works and who's trending and whatnot. So Walmart, the way they're working right now is they're really trying to get a lot of D2C brands in there. I guess they've seen some data that shows that brands they've gotten in there have performed well. Like goalie and stuff like that. That's yeah. probably rips. Yeah. yeah. Cause like, cause those brands have already paid for the exposure. So when they walk through the door, they already know who it is. Like exactly. And like, you think about it, the people who are, they, before D2C even existed, the people who are in Walmart, we're building their brand in Walmart. In Walmart. <laughs> literally in Walmart. Yeah, like yeah. you're literally building your customer list in Walmart. Yeah, like, yeah. whereas we can send, you know, hundred K plus visitors to Walmart. Well, now you can send yeah. that email that your boss sent 10 years ago and then <laughs> boom, you see the uptick. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's full circle. Like that. yeah. that's crazy. That's crazy. Talk, talk a lot about business. I want to yeah. crack a little bit into your personal life. If yeah. You yeah. <laughs> um, I always like to ask. He's laughing. He's like, oh. I, I always like, go I won't go ways, too personal. <laughs> I won't go too personal, sure. but I always like to ask um, what what your parents did for work and kind yeah. of what it was like growing up and what shaped you to get into this place. Because I feel like a lot of times parents will say, we want you to go to college. We want you to get a, you know, an engineering job. Yeah. Or like we're entrepreneurs. We're you know going to encourage you to go into you know, these unorthodox routes because we know that there could be a really good outcome, if, especially if you like it. Yeah. Um, so I guess talk to me a little bit more about like, how you were raised and what, yeah. what like how that might have influenced where you are today. Absolutely. Um, so my parents, uh, they were born and bred in India. Um, they came here in the late eighties. Um, they, I mean, they didn't know like of English. <laughs> um, and we, we lived in Seattle. Uh, we had a motel there and we actually lived in the motel. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So, um, it, me, like we didn't know anything else, me and my brother. So we thought it was the Normal. best. Oh, and yeah, our yeah. sleepovers were amazing with our friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like we got a whole, whole motel. We got a swimming pool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I always, I always figured like, oh, we make a lot of money. And it's later you find out, damn, we were struggling. And uh, my parents, they're probably the nice people in the world. Uh, I'm definitely a mama's boy. Um, I'll do everything for my mom all the yeah. time. <laughs> um, but me and my dad, we would growing up, we would kind of uh, be at, at odds because he was a businessman. He was an entrepreneur and they wanted the best for me. So they wanted me to go, get a good education and whatnot. I was a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I did not care about school uh, at all. And it's funny because all my cousins, they're all getting straight A's, honors, everything. And I'm hearing about it all day. I, I play a lot of sports. I play baseball. I play basketball. Um, I play golf as a captain of my golf team. Um, and uh, my parents were always down on me because like I wasn't getting great grades. So I, anyways, fast forward, I'm like, all right, in my head, I'm getting out of here. Um, I'm going to go to New York and that's going to be that's where a I big move. kind of reinvent myself. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to actually study and go to class. First, first year goes by. That didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted by a lot of other stuff. Um, but anyways, eventually, once I switched to art, and which is what I was always really good at, and graphic design in general, um, that's when 
man, I was bringing home 4.0 GPA every semester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, it, I was like, damn, I'm actually, and it was, got to a point where I'm better than my professors at this now. Yeah. And it, it got to a point where I, I was named top 25 under 25 designers by AIGA, which is like a big, uh, it's like the NBA of art. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. Yeah. Uh, it's like a organization, but anyways, they printed me in this magazine, everything, everything. And my parents at that point, they realized like, okay, he didn't become, you know, the, the finance guy or the lawyer or the doctor who wanted him to be, but he's a businessman. Like he's actually really good at what he does. And this is back, I was selling t-shirts at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like everyone did. <laughs> um, but that was kind of my upbringing. I grew up upstate. Uh, I mean, I grew up in Seattle, but then we moved to upstate New York. Uh, it's pretty rural up there. Uh, city life was definitely new. Um, and you know, it's one of those things where I got here, I wanted to come here and now I want to get out of here <laughs> and go back to that kind of quiet. Where do you want to go? Yeah. Anywhere quiet. I'll go to like Denver or like, yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. so just be out somewhere where there's not this hustle and bustle. Like I still want to always be grinding. I, you know, I'd be dead if I wasn't, I just sure. getting into a lot of other stuff. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, it's, uh, it was a, it was a struggling up, upbringing, but it was one of those things where I was never shown that. I always felt like we were doing great. Yeah. Like there were days where people were coming into our motel. A guy came with a gun one time and like held it up to my dad. Like, but it like never phased me or anything. It was just like normal yeah, for me, yeah. you know? Wow. Yeah. I got what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then you'd see you'd see your dad like next time he came and my dad chased him out with a bat. <laughs> oh, shit. And it's one of those things where my dad, he always told me, you never ever back down to anyone. You could back down in a moment, but you better win. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, um, it's just one of those. My dad's an old school guy. He's a tough guy. And it, I think that's just what's bred me. I've seen him work his ass off for his entire life uh, and done a lot harder work than I'm doing now. Um, You're all just clicking away. Yeah. There's really nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're clicking on a keyboard. This dude was getting his hands dirty, doing yeah. stuff he didn't even know how to do. <laughs> yeah. That's nuts. So, yeah, tough upbringing. Yeah. We it's figured it it's out. super interesting, though, about, like, the motel. When you were young, you were like, yeah, I thought we were balling. Yeah. It's like, dude, life's all about perspective, exactly. you know? Like, 100%. You can be, like, you can be, you can grow up in a big house, but your parents can have, like, no money, like, double mortgage on the house. You never, you go to the best school system. Yeah. You're hanging out with your friends. You're doing everything. And, like, you know, you're like, mom, can I get 30 bucks to go to the mall? They're like, no. Like, yeah. Just go, go, go work for it. Go mow some lawns, whatever. And you're like, man, like I'm living. Like maybe I have to work a little bit harder, like to, to go yeah. get those shoes at the mall. But like I'm living, you know. Living. And, and I think, I think you know, and parents do a, can do a really good job of also distracting you from yeah. what might be going on behind the scenes. Which is like, shout out parents. Yeah, you know? yeah. Shout out mom and dad. Yeah. Um, that that I think that's the biggest thing is they understood our situation and they knew that they couldn't kind of show that part of the situation to us. Yeah. Me and my brother were the happiest kids growing up. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. sometimes you think about it a lot of my happiest moments were when I had no money <laughs> and it, it's, it's really true when they say you can't measure happiness with, you know, how much money you make. It's how, it's kind of what you do with that money. It's, the yeah. money is to buy freedom, right? Yeah. This is yeah, good. Yeah, this yeah. is far. Yeah. I like this. <laughs> yeah. How long we have? It's an hour. Yeah, our time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting tired. tired. <laughs> Get hungry. <laughs> Get hungry. <laughs> have you done a podcast before or not? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been on the chew on this one. Yeah, chew on this. And then yeah, yeah, just yeah. a couple of the random ones. But this one was the yeah. most fun. <laughs> yeah, that's, what, dude, that's what they all say. Yeah. That's what all the people it say. It really was, though. more of a conversation than like a... No. Like a, like I, we're, we're like, so many people will like DM us like, yo, can we uh, can we get 30 minutes to like pick your brain? And it's like, that's not what this is. You yeah. Know? Like, no, it's... And it's like, you don't want to... Like, I don't want to talk about ad strategy for yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 60 minutes. Yeah. Dude, I was like, I want to do tactical. I was like, honestly, fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. You like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I got a little clip. Yeah. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I want to hear the cool stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we're yeah. like, yeah, I don't know how the fuck we're doing this Walmart thing, but like, yeah, we'll figure it yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Like, so that's the thing. It's like, guys like us, we just figure it out. People, yeah. yeah and people are reluctant to be that authentic on camera. Are we still rolling? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> well, we gotta do the like subscribe bullshit. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's, yeah, that's the first time that's happened. <laughs> what do you call it? The, the gentleman's clothes? The gentleman's clothes? He didn't want to say that. It's all good. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. go like, subscribe, comment. Like. Where, where can they find you? Do you want do you even want them to yeah. Yeah. find you? Yeah, yeah, find yeah. me. <laughs> He's like, yeah, well, sure. At least then Ron and Ash will get off my ass. <laughs> put, put myself out there. Go find me. <laughs> uh, we'll have some links in the description. Yeah, yeah, for like Instagram, for Twitter, stuff. whatever. We might uh, repost the, the uh, what was it? Not you on this. The, the Obvi discount link. Oh, yeah, we got <laughs> a discount link. Buys. Someone buys it. We got to ask if Buy it. And uh, if, if one of you actually goes and buys it I'll and find out who it is, we're gonna, we're, we'll, we'll give you something uh, something special. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We got a little uh, Obvi discount code. Yeah. Anyway, well, it was like, good having you on. Yeah, thanks, Appreciate, uh, appreciate you coming on. Put the mic down. We're done. See you next week. See you later.